next episode of Titus Balls Let's go. Let's start recording this. Let's bring us a little bit closer. Oh no. And the microphone died. There it is. Hopefully I can be heard. I should. I should be seen clearly. Um so yeah, it's been a whole year since I posted a video. That's my bad on my end. Um I mean as you can see, you know who we gonna talk about and what we're gonna talk about. So yeah. Um like I said, it's been a whole year since I posted the video. That's my bad on my end. Um, I should have been doing a lot more things, keeping up with the content, keeping up with all the things that I've watched, and basically reporting them back to you guys. But I haven't. So, hopefully, I can make more um, videos, doing more reviews and reactions and stuff. But let's go ahead and get started because you already know what we're here for. We, 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 we here for what I'm wearing and for this guy being here. Spider-Man, no way home. What I can say, 20 years. It's, it's, it's been 20 years and I've lived long enough to finally see this happen. I never even thought that this would happen, but it, it finally happened. And granted, I've seen, we've, we've seen it in cartoons, in comics and video games but not actually in a freaking movie and we finally get it but let's let's just recap right no way home started from where far from home ended basically mysterio leaking that peter parker is spider-man and everything just go in cahoots with this guy or whatever i can't just believe i used the word cahoots but i just used the word cahoots and yeah, his identity being revealed, and it basically causes problems for him, his friends, and his family. And he didn't know what to do. And basically, you know, he goes to jail. Not really, he's just getting interrogated by the police or whatever. Or, um, what do you call them? Damage control and everything else. And he ends up <laughs> getting a lawyer. And the lawyer that he gets. So, even from the leaks and rumors and everything else, we all knew that. Uh, Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil, was going to be in the movie, but we didn't know because I thought it was going to be actually, I thought it was going to be a whole like court case trial and everything. But granted, we didn't get that, but we still got Charlie Cox to come back as Matt Murdock. That actually means that the Netflix series is in continuity with it, maybe, hopefully, I think so. But to see this guy reprise his role, and that's even awesome. Even the people in the theater, both times I saw it, they went crazy people who knew but still so he helps Peter out and everything and then he catches a freaking block while looking at Peter granted the dude is blind who, who people who don't know that Matt Murdock is blind Peter looks and he's like bro <laughs> how did you catch that and he's like I'm a really good lawyer but anyways so after they get the we know damage control and police off their backs and everything people in school and everything else knows that peter is spider-man so he just wants a normal life things how it goes back to like how it was and everything so next person he goes to is dr strange for help because you know, granted he fought he helped save the world with strange and strange's like yeah bro i can help you out so he goes in you know he casts a spell that will make everybody forget that he's spider-man and peter now granted some say it's Peter's fault, some say it's Strange's fault. I'm going with, at the same time, both. Because, let's say you get older and everything else, and me and my friends talked about this last night. You get older and everything else, and you can't multitask as good as you, you were able to do when you are younger and everything else. So Strange is casting a spell, and Peter's talking, and he's like, bro, like, I can't do two things at one time. I'm listening, but I'm not listening type of thing. Granted, I know I, I do that all the time. I'm listening, but I'm not listening. If I'm playing a game or I'm doing an animation, something like that. I'm listening, but I'm not listening. I'm like, wait, can you repeat that? 
So Peter's talking. He's like, hey, you know, um, Mary Jane can't forget, and and my Aunt May can't forget, and Ned can't forget. And Strange is like, you know what? F it. I can't. I can't help you because you're doing too much talking. And I've already casted like five spells and I had to contain them in the fall. But not knowing that when he contained these spells, he already opened up like bits and pieces of the multiverse that came over. So these villains came over. And yes, let's get on to the villains. Bruh. <sighs> Alfred Milano back at Starbuck. Like, I said, like I said, with these these rumors and leaks and everything, like we knew these people were coming back as these these characters and everything. But I did not expect it to be as amazing as it was gonna be. Man. So he comes back as Doc Ock. And they're fighting, in which the bridge fight is freaking awesome as heck. <laughs> and I just wanna say my favorite YouTuber, and there's this TikToker, I forgot his name. But they they basically called it out. Um basically saying that when Doc Ock gets his hands on Iron Man Tech and everything and he has like I guess new he got his hands on Iron Man Tech and he got like um, I guess new armor or something like that basically um yeah new new arms for his arm and at the end of the movie that he's gonna become good in which yes he did become good at the end of the movie but he still realized that his Peter, what well the Peter that he was fighting wasn't his Peter that he he knew of and everything, um, because he knew at the end of the original Spider-Man Two movie he knew that he was fighting Peter, and at the end of the day he wanted to I guess like he was trying to save Mary Jane or I mean I forgot which one it's been years since I've seen this movie, and he wanted Peter to I guess um, control the power or something like that. Um, <clears throat> And then yet, um, he even realized that Electro wasn't from his universe, but he knew that uh, Osborne had died or something like that. He was like, wait, that's a ghost. That's that's not Osborne. But let's go to Electro right quick. I want to talk about Electro. First, I want to say Jamie Foxx did a good job being Electro. He knew that... Um, oops, I was trying to make sure the camera's aligned. He knew... Wait... Jamie Foxx did a good job as Electro. I want to say basically if if that was not New York, like Jamie Foxx was not a New Yorker and everything, like he had Electro spot on. <clears throat> now, the actual original Electro, Max Dillon that he played, I did not like that. Um, Electro. I wasn't a fan of that Electro because I hate the stipulation that they gave or stereotype that they gave that um, a nerd who always get picked on, this nerdy person who always get picked on, and who people who just didn't see, they didn't get looked over and everything else. And some people try to, like the hero always try to help him, but at the end of the day, he always end up becoming a bad, a bad guy. And they did the same thing in freaking Wonder Woman, like uh, 1984. Like uh, the chick who, pay, who played. Um, um, Cheetah and everything else. She was a nerd. She got picked on. She, uh, people looked over her and all this stuff. And like, like, as you know, she became a villain. And I hated that Electro. And even in the new Electro, the new Max Dillon, he annoyed me at first. But at the same, but at the end of the day, he ended up growing on me because I was like, hey, this is, this is Electro. This is how Electro is supposed to be. He's supposed to be like a thug. Um, um, a thief, a villain, and I like that Electro. Even though in the comics Electro's not that bright, but he ends up becoming smarter later on. He ends up understanding his powers, in which that's what Jamie did. Well, Jamie Fox Electro did. He ended up understanding his power because when he came into this universe, he was like, "Whoa, this is different. This energy." He was like, "This, I'm not used to this, but I like it." That's how Electro is. Even um, when him and Lizard had their little uh, confrontation or whatever, it was like, yo, Electro, you look different. You know, you used to have, you used to look ugly. He, he straight up, he was like, yeah, bro, you you was ugly. But now how, how the hell did you become a Stefan and everything else? And that's the way I like how they, they play that off in the movie. 
you know, it was basically because he was in a different universe and he, had, he, he felt different power, different electricity, and he was able to transform himself into that person. Because um, remember, Amazing Spider-Man 2, you know, he became pure energy, in which that's what Electro is. He became pure energy even in the comics. So, and cartoons and video games, he became pure energy. So he was able to transform himself. Now, let's get on Green Goblin. William Defoe as Green Goblin. William Defoe always has been an awesome Green Goblin. And down. And I didn't like the fact that he died in the original movie because I wanted him to come back and just continue his role. I mean, he did as a ghost type character, but still, reprising his role as Green Goblin, we would have both. I like the way that he was able to transform from like regular Norman Osborn, regular guy who didn't know anything, who was like, yo, I'm here, like, what's going on? I don't remember this and that and all that stuff. But then, like, snap into the green goblin just like that like his green goblin is creepy like and i like that and he just man i just i just i just can't explain it like his green goblin is awesome and i like the way they were more because okay in the original spider-man uh to Spider spider-man i didn't like the way that um green goblin looked I didn't like the whole um, armored mask and everything because I'm used to the cartoon, the latex mask, and like you'd be able to pull it off and everything else. But I like the way they pulled it off in this movie because they actually did give him his original um, costume and everything. Not, not even original costume, but just like comic accurate look. Even they even gave him the hoodie, and I was happy with that. They gave, they gave him. The green and purple look instead of just a whole green outfit. They gave him a green and purple look because he ended up taking a scarf or something like that or a hoodie and he just ended up putting it on. And I like the fact that William Defoe was like, I'm not coming back as Green Goblin only if I get to, get to do my own my own stunts. That's what I like. And that was that was awesome as well. Like, man, William Defoe, he's just he's just awesome, man. Like Green Goblin was spot on. Um the only things I didn't like, I mean, I still like these characters. The only things I didn't like is Lizard and Sandman. Like, they were just background characters or whatever. I mean, like, they had a purpose, but they didn't have a purpose, right? Like, Sandman didn't know what side he wanted to be on. Like, he helped, he helped Peter, but he was like, oh, you're not my Peter. Why am I here? What did you do to him? He, he couldn't make up his mind what he wanted to do because after they went to um happy's place and Peter was basically helping everyone you know then he's talking to Lecture like hey man you should chill out he's gonna help us then they say you know like a big fight break out and then sam disappears like what and then at the end he's fighting all the spider-man why are you fighting them you didn't have no motivation to fight them so huh and then the lizard was just like yeah i'm here yeah, it ain't gonna work. Yeah, I'm gonna fight you. But at the same time, it's like, to understand the lizard is like, his mind, I guess, works differently because he's just, he can be good and evil at the same time-ish type of thing. But yeah, they were just there just to be there. And and I mean, like, I didn't have a problem with them, but at the same time, I kind of didn't really have a motivation type of thing, but it was still good to see them in the movie. Yeah. But let's get down to what the real thing is. <laughs> Tavia's just laughing at something. Um, like I said, 20 freaking years. And I finally get to see this come into fruition. Because, like I said, I never thought I was, I saw this in a movie. <laughs> I just saw a Facebook notification. But I never saw this in a movie. I never thought I would see this, like only in like cartoon comics and video games. And I finally get to see all three Spider-Man who I've watched on the big screen come together at one time. And like their 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 chemistry, their relationship in the movie, just everything, like they acted like how Spider-Man would act coming from the comics. And it's just like 
Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is basically just the older Spider-Man. He's been through it all. He has the knowledge. He has the wisdom. He can basically just educate both of them of just basically what happened. He lost his uncle. He didn't lose me, but yeah, he lost Ben, and he he got he got MJ, and he basically fought the villains and everything. So he's he knows it. And then Andrew uh, Spider Man, basically he he's more of an edgy Spider Man. He he went down that dark path and everything. You know, he lost his loved one. He lost his Ben, and just he in a way. Well, I want to say he's tired of it all, but he's tired. And I lost my train of thought. And he just didn't have anybody to relate to. Yeah, he lost his best friend. And same thing with with Toby. He lost his best friend. So it's like Andrew was like, nah, I can't let you go this this, this dark path. And then um, Holland Spider-Man, his Spider-Man is new. It's, everything is fresh to him. He didn't lose anybody yet. He, I mean, we don't know what happened to Uncle Ben, but we know that Ben's not there. So we assume that he's already dead. But everything is new to to Tom and basically he's on a team <laughs> the Avengers in which they discussed that later in the movie but yeah and he yeah he's 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 the youngest of all the Peters and he, everything's fresh and new to him um but this their chemistry is just so amazing and then like Andrew Garfield Spider-Man he gets to redeem himself he redeems himself because yes he felt bad that he lost his win and he didn't have anybody he didn't have an MJ yet and then we, so yeah, he didn't meet his MJ. And then when he sees that Tom's about to lose his MJ, he comes in and he redeems himself in the most epic way. And then which um, the TikToker and, and, and Rob called it out. It was like, Tom, uh, Andrew's going to save Tom, Mary Jane, because he's going to redeem himself. I didn't expect that. I really didn't expect it. Because I didn't expect anybody to die in this movie. And I would tell you, I, I cried multiple times because May died <laughs> and that was I wasn't expecting that I didn't expect her to die and she died and she finally gave the speech with great power comes great responsibility in which that's what Tom needed to hear because he didn't get that yet and then you know I thought Mary Jane was gonna die I thought Ned was gonna die in which granted they didn't die but I did tear up when Andrew saved her I I teared up when when Tom had to say goodbye to everybody. Shoot, I teared up because I thought Toby was about to die because the Green Goblin, you backstabbing dick. <laughs> and like my friend said, like my homie Tyree said, you can't turn your back on the Goblin. <laughs> but I mean, the movie's just awesome. And then let's go back. The fight, the fight between Strange and Spider-Man, which proves his point. Spider-Man can't lose a fight. He, I mean, I mean, granted, he has lost fights. There's been plenty of fights that he lost, but he can't lose a fight due to Spider Sense. When he, when he, when, when him and Strange fought, and Strange basically knocked him into the astral plane. And it was trying to take the box away from him. He was like, how are you doing this? And Peter was like, I don't know, but this is awesome. The spider sense wouldn't allow him to be defeated. The tingle. It just wouldn't allow him to be defeated. But that fight was awesome. And he went back. He was like, yo, I fought Strange and I have won. <laughs> it's freaking amazing. I mean, like, I can go on forever about this movie because it was just purely awesome. And... I'm just going to say this is like my top Marvel movie. It beat Endgame. It beats Infinity War. It beats Black Panther. It beats all of them so far. And I'm, I don't even remember which one was my top. Because I know like... I think Winter Soldier was one. And then Civil War. Or correct me wrong. It could be Civil War. Then Winter Soldier. And then Thor Ragnarok. And I guess like Guardians of the Galaxy 2, one of those two. But now this one tops it. This one, this one really tops it, man. Like everything was just right. Nothing was 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 wrong. Like the only things I didn't like was basically those two things. But other than that, it fits well. 
and I can't remember because some people came to me and they questioned me about certain things like why did this happen why did that happen and this doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense even when um Aunt May was like yeah Peter one of the guys you were looking for is here like I was like well how did she find out about it but at the same time that could have been a conversation that was handled off screen like off camera he probably called her on the way even with them helping him like even when Strange basically fought the lizard and captured the lizard like how did he know that was something that happened off camera like oh well Peter this guy doesn't belong in the universe because he's probably they probably had a conversation in the subway like why are you here who are you well I'm looking for Spider-Man but at the same time I'll probably try to beat you into one of my minions and I'm trying to remember like even like conversations that like Ock had with other people you know he was basically explaining like oh yeah because they, they all explained like what they were doing before they they got put into this into like that universe they were like oh yeah i was fighting spider-man and and they remember the last thing they did so until they got brought into the universe and everything like like i said i can go on and on and on and on and just like how amazing this movie is and the other thing is like the the post credit scene with um tom hardy venom and everything like i was trying to i was trying to like just bring in like how did Tom Hardy get brought to this universe because Tom Hardy doesn't know or Venom doesn't know who Spider-Man is. And that's the only thing that, that gets to me. But at the same time, from the comics, with the whole Noel thing and all that stuff, um, Venom has a hive mind because, remember, uh, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, remember they did say they, they, they fought an alien, they fought a symbiote and everything else. And uh, Andrew and Tom didn't fight a Venom yet. But basically, we're going to go with that with Tobey Maguire Spider Man. He fought a Venom, and the Venom, Venom shares a hive mind. We can go with that. So that's how basically that Venom, Tom Hardy? Yeah, Tom Hardy's Venom knows who Spider Man is, but that share, they share a hive mind. And now hopefully we can get a Andrew Garfield Spider-Man 3 to where he goes against Tom Hardy. That would be awesome. He finally gets what they didn't get. Well, he finally gets his third movie, actually. And then he gets to fight an Elliot Symbiote. And then, you know, we get another Spider-Man movie, which uh, Tom Holland gets to fight another venue. And, I, and you know what? I like the way it ended. In a way, I, w I wish that he would have told Mary Jane and Ned what happened, but he, he kept it peacefully. And we will see how the next uh, series of Spider Man movie goes. Oh, man. Like I said, I, I wish I could talk about this. I can go on forever and ever and ever. And then, I don't know, I might. Uh, I'm blabbering about other stuff. But, like I said, once again, I apologize for not just making more videos. I mean, this is fun. I, I, I've been doing this, and hopefully, I can do more. So I've been meaning to do one about <sighs> Venom. There would be corners that like Lost we'll Ever movie, and actually, surprisingly, Black Widow was a good movie. I like Black Widow. I just didn't like what they handled Taskmaster like everybody else. And there's more movies and shows that I've watched. I just haven't done the review for. But um, yeah. If you haven't seen the movie, go see it. I mean, it's it's been plenty of time. The movie's been out long enough. Um, it's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's. And um, peace, love, now, all that jizz jazz. And to the next episode, I will see you guys later. Peace.